This is my friend Allison Billy. Uh, we've been friends for quite a few years now. Um, and um, Allison is bringing in one of his weavings. He's one of the very few um, Navajo men in Utah who weave, and really one of the few Navajo men who weave. There, there still aren't very many. Um, so Allison, if you want to just talk a little bit about your weaving and, and how you got started with it. So how old were you? I was nine years old. Nine years old. When I first with, um, well, my first rug. Um, so was Gladys surprised when she came home? Um, and Gladys was very surprised when she saw that. Um, I think everybody was so surprised when they um, saw it. Um, but then the story just came around when I did my first loom and my first rug. And and the ladies around, my grandma and her sister and her brothers were telling me that, you know, um, Mel's, Mel were the first weavers, so men were the first weavers in um, the Navajo culture, so um, I don't know where, how the women got a hold of it, but, um, but that was just one of the stories that were told to me. So from there, um, everybody accepted that I was weaving. Um, my grandmother and my great-grandmother were still alive then. Um, and my grandma's siblings all encouraged me to do it, so I continued on. And I still do have my first rag. That's nice. Um, it was yarns that were dyed by my great grandmother, mm -hmm. um, which I still have, and which is still it's still in the it's, you know hung up in the house. So, but I went from from a weaving that you know it, the shape goes like the hourglass mm -hmm. to a shape that you know it's more like rectangle or square. So mm -hmm. But I'm still learning a little, and I try not to get, I try to make my ruts much more different from what I see today. Um, try to make my designs a little off from everybody else. But well, for example, in this weaving that you brought in, what were the things that you felt you wanted to do differently in it that makes it your own signature? Um, well, these, this part where the little arrows are um, was a picture I saw um, my grandma's on my grandma's rug. It's an old, older rug she made mm -hmm. back in the, I believe back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And she had this border on there, and I just saw a picture of it. So I figured I'd go ahead and put this in. Mm -hmm. um, but these are just stuff that I see like old pi from old pictures. Mm -hmm. um, this one is more like I saw it behind um, my great grandmother's wedding picture. It was kind oh. of behind her so I figured I'd go ahead and um, try 
I combine stuff together. I like to see pictures and just combine, you know, take pieces of those stuff off the pictures and put them together. And this is actually what I came up with. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice, and, 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 and it honors them. It honors your family, yeah. which is a, a neat way of bringing in the, your own history into the weaving. Yeah, and I had a couple from Italy come by like three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they wanted to take the whole loom, uh. but it wasn't done, so uh -huh. I was like, no, I can't do that, you know, I can't give my, you know, I'm not going to give my mind away halfway done. Right. You know, and that's one of the tradition I, uh, I was taught that, you know, the, um, your, your weaving is your mind, you know, if you can do a clear a clear weaving, you know, that's how good your, your mind's working, mm -hmm. and you will go far in society. Um, there's a lot of other things that were taught to me, and I'm, this, this has a black border around it, and I didn't put an opening in it, so uh -huh. pretty much like I just closed myself and just did this weaving. So I figured, but maybe there's a mistake I did somewhere in here, so mm -hmm. and maybe that will be my opening.